Goeiemorgen allemaal en welkom bij die Leeuwse Brul Botgooi. Vandaag gaan we ons praat oor truteldieren en jou kamer. En hoe kom jij en jou kosteskamer een truteldier moet hee? For those of you who didn't understand the word, no worries. Unless you come from a very tiny population of people in Africa, you will not understand what I just said. Today, as I just said in another language, to grab your attention and make sure that you're listening properly, we are going to talk about... Why you should be able to have a pet in your dorm room. Welcome to the Take a Pod Postcard. <laughs> <laughs> you want to say that part again, Philip? Oh yeah, that was just another language too, guys. That wasn't me stumbling yeah. over my words. Mm-mm. Welcome to the Take a Pause Podcast. My name is Phil Barouche. And I'm Heidi Holsapple. And together, we are the dynamic duo. And we shall relay all the world's information to you. And you shall be enlightened for it. But before we move on, a bit of a sad notification. I am unfortunately leaving the Lion's Roar and the Take Your Pause podcast with it. Not for not enjoying this experience and not that it hasn't been a complete pleasure. It has truly been wonderful working with all the people here. And being able to do this, but unfortunately due to my schedule, I shall no longer be able to continue. I thank you guys for listening and for appreciating the work we do, those of you who do, (laughs) and who do not just, you know, listen to us as some masochistic pleasure. Truly, I appreciate all of this. Now, on to the business at hand. You come home after a long day at class. You've just had lab. You have that line across your forehead and you're all sweaty. You're tired. You really just want to lay down. You want some comfort. But your roommate isn't going to give it to you because he barely speaks to you. He's just on his laptop playing some game that you hardly know the name of. Or he's watching YouTube videos. Always, always watching something in the bathroom, and you don't know why it takes so long. Oh, Lord. There's no comfort. It's just you. Your parents barely speak to you, because they're off enjoying their life now, now that they don't have a kid in the house. And you don't have a significant other. If only you could have something. Something that could lift you out of the depression of being so, so alone. But unfortunately, campus just doesn't allow that. They don't allow you to have the only companion that will always appreciate you, no matter what. Yeah. It's very sad. You can only get a pet if they're registered. So if you have the requirements, like, you know, if it's Social a, anxiety. Yeah, social anxiety, depression, if you have a food allergy and they sniff it for you, whatever it is. But that shouldn't be the only case because us normal people, I call us normal, no one's normal, but us other people... They want a little friend, too. So we should be able to have any animal that you want as long as it's trained. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of benefits to having a pet in general. They lower anxiety. They help people with ADHD concentrate, especially if those people can, like, say you need to recite something or you need to study microbiology, for example. That's a personal example. Reading it to something, like a pet, for example, helps a lot. And... They just boost your mood in general because a lot of times all you want when you're in a bad mood is something that's attentive. And animals, unlike humans, are naturally attentive. And they are just going to be there for you. And they're going to instantaneously lift your mood. And once your mood is lifted, your productivity is going to be lifted as well. All right. They definitely do help with the productivity and the mental health. That's a huge aspect, especially for us college students because we're always stressed. Yeah. And, I mean... They're just the perfect solution to everything. Yeah, I... <laughs> they're just... Pets are just wonderful. They solve everything. Do you have melanoma? Your dog can lick your skin and you'll be cured instantly. Actually, not for that example. But if they do lick a wound, it's said to heal faster. Oh, yeah, because they have, like, lysozymes. This is a bit of biology that you... Like, but they do. There's antibacterial they enzymes in spit. Um, not necessarily for all infections. Don't be like, ah, I stabbed myself with a knife. I'll just let my dog lick it and I'll be fine. Um, 
They can smell out cancer, though. So that is... That, that is that's, true. That's a thing. <laughs> They're really cool. You want to know that, yeah. And you could train them to smell anything, but... Like my feet. Um... Things useful, you know, <laughs> like the dogs that are used. You don't to... think it's useful for a dog to smell your feet? No one wants to smell toe cheese, Philip. I want my dog to. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> I'm, joking I'm joking. I don't. I don't have anything about feet. I promise, Saren. I promise. No, dogs are definitely wonderful for many things, but sometimes dogs aren't even the only option. There are many right. animals that you could have. Be they reptiles, fish, gerbils, anything. Don't forget the cats. Uh, but I don't like it. Okay, I don't like cats. That's that's personal bias. But cats too, yes. Things... I'm offended. Most... <laughs> You're offended that I don't like cats? Yeah. It's not just me, Heidi. There's a bunch of people that don't like I'm gonna cats. I'm going to show you a picture of my cat. I like one... There's a single cat I like. And it's my girlfriend's cat. Because he's like a little tiger. He just wants to spend be outside all the time. He kills things. He doesn't want to get in my face all the time. Doesn't get on tables. All he wants is to be outside and occasionally he'll walk past you and you give him a scratch on the cheek and he's good. He's such a little man. I like that. I don't, okay. Most cats I've been are either mean or they're obnoxiously attention seeking. Not all of them. There are some really obnoxious cats, but there are some really chill ones too. Like Chloe, she, Chloe has a great cat, and Charlotte okay, has a great cats, cat. Yeah. And it does. mine's a little crazy, but he's a kitten, so he's gonna be crazy. That yeah, was so that was a my lot of bad. kitten energy getting out yeah. there. Yeah, but I mean, back back to back the, to other uh, animals. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So so there's a variety of animals you can have. The problem is none of them are allowed. No. And well, you could have a fish. That is somewhat unsure. As far as I understand, it's, it's no pets. Oh, um, well, I know a couple of people who have brought a fish. We're not adding them. anyone about the pets, that, pets they're keeping in secret. But um, maybe a caveat for fish, as far as I understand, it's the, um, the pamphlets and regulations I have seen, it is absolutely no pets. Um, it, so it might have been in the past and some people have just kept on doing it. Um, but as far as I understand, it's no pets. Okay. Now, mainly that's because of damage is possibly being caused by pets. All right. Roommates not liking pets. Allergies of es pets. Animals escaping. And I can to a certain degree understand these. I mean, they probably just don't want to get into that whole hurdle. But right. I think pets, as we've discussed, can have a lot more positive outcomes than you know, than the, the negatives. Yeah, the negatives of, in my opinion at least, definitely outweighed. I mean, if you have a student population with an increased mental state that leads to higher productivity, meaning that you're going to have higher academic results and more recognition, which means higher enrollment possibly, that definitely outweighs here and there a, a pet causing some damage and if you put in the proper regulations that might not even be a regular thing it right. might happen in isolated incidents maybe every two years right but that still is to be seen i mean because there are people those like you've said who are registered with like anxiety who have their support animals mm -hmm. and they have and they're highly trained and they keep them in regulated environments and they, as far as I understand, don't cause any problems. No. So if you had animals in your dorm room, you could just have RAs have a certain list of criteria that has been researched, set down that they need to investigate. Okay. Say you have like a terrarium for a spider or something, it needs to fulfill certain recommendations. It needs to be completely sealed. Right. It needs to be in a space where it's not going to be easily knocked over, and an actual cage, not a box. Yes, know. an <laughs> actual cage, and you know if damages are caused, you get fined as you normally would for causing any kind of damage. Right, and they do the checks anyway for individual rooms. So I mean, something that they already have to do on a checklist. Why not just have an animal and look for the checks? Because whenever I lived in a dorm. Before I got there, they did a check. Anything that was there that they didn't catch, I wrote on the paper. And I was like, hey, this was also here. And then at the end of my stay, they went back and they checked the dorm yeah. to make sure I didn't have any additional damage. And if I did, you pay for that. 
So, I mean, just make sure you train your animal so it doesn't destroy. Yeah. And another way you could do that is not have, like, crazy breeds. Like, I know at the apartment I'm staying in now, you can't have big, crazy dogs, you know, because they would be the ones to damage stuff. But you could have yeah. other smaller, safer breeds. Yeah. The, I mean, if you get the animal, you know that it you are the one who's liable for damages. So you're going to have an animal that is going to be safe to keep there. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you're going to have to pay for it. So that's definitely a thing. And if someone accidentally does let the animal escape, then you just have some heavy penalties. And if they ha let it happen more than, say, examples, three times, like you get three strikes. You're or out. like, yeah, maybe even less than that. Maybe after they do it two times, you're not allowed to get an animal again. You are caught up. So I think there's definitely a lot of easy regulations that you can bring in for it, and it'd be a net benefit to the student population. All right. It's more so just something that the university doesn't want to deal with at all at this stage, it seems almost like. And I definitely think that's something they need to look into. All right. I agree because, I mean, pets just have so many pros, like we listed earlier. And the cons, like we mentioned, all of them have something that you could do to fix it. So why not? You know? Yeah. I mean, especially for me, like, take for example in the final season, um, I was having some heavy burnout. I'm having some burnout now. It's not even finals yet, but... It's midterms. Yeah. Yeah, so, like, when the exams come about midterms and finals, man, you really just some want something to kind of care for you. <laughs> yeah, you just want to be... Yeah. You just want something to comforted. care about you. Yeah. yeah. So I want to, like, man, I would love it if I could come home and my 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 dog you know that i've i've raised and i've trained my sweet little boy is waiting there for me and he's just jumping up on me giving me love and i'm like you know what this day might have sucked but at least he loves me right <laughs> makes it all better yeah it's yeah and you're sitting there studying and you're like you're freaking out about the fact that you can't get all this information to yet you just look to your right and there Whatever pet you have is waiting for you, and you can spend like 10 to 15 minutes just relaxing, spending some time with them. Right. Clear just your brain, down. take in all the cuddles, just enjoy your minute before you have to get back to work. Or if you're done for the day, you know, no homework, you just get to relax yeah. for the rest of the day with your pet, whatever it is. And also, getting out of your dorm room is a very good thing when you're stressed out. Like we've said in our stress podcast, go back and watch that. Getting out of your dorm room is very good for that. And taking your animal out is also good for them. And it gives you an incentive to go out and relieve some stress. Right. And walks with your pet just make everything better, too. Like, walking yourself, you're like, all right, I don't care anymore. I want to go back to the room, maybe watch a video, watch Netflix, do whatever you want to do. But if you have a pet and you just get to watch them, you know, and they're walking all cute and stuff. I don't know. It just makes me feel better. I have a cat, so I don't walk my cat. But, yeah. Yeah, that's... It would be cute if you had a cat that likes harnesses or dogs. Anything that you could take out on a leash, that would be cool. Yeah. Yeah, so I definitely think this... Hey, campus uh, housing. <laughs> um, Let's start a petition. Yeah. Sign, I think, what do you need, 100? Is it a hundred signatures? I don't know. I've never signed... Like, I've probably signed a petition before, but I've never made a petition. Um, oh. Whatever the amount is. I think it I could think be a very substantial benefit to not only the students, but the campus as a whole. Right. And it's something that should be considered. And I make sure before you get a pet, because it's not passed yet, in the meantime, for your mental health, go to the University Counseling Center. Definitely. They yes. definitely help. If, if you are struggling, seeing as we've, we've spoken about that in this podcast, um, in this time of midterms and when finals do come about, do not try and shoulder it alone. That is the hardest way of going about it. You might think, no, I don't have the time to focus on how I feel right now. You always have the time. And once you do focus on what you're struggling with it makes everything else easier too you're like i'm struggling already to get through my work i don't have the time to go and sit down and speak with someone 
well, make the time. Yeah, and it's gonna be easier getting through that work if you don't feel like poo poo all the time. Yeah. Poo poo is the broadcast friendly word. <laughs> poo poo. Yeah. So definitely do go there if you need it. Or even just find a friend. Find anyone to talk to. Find someone you trust. Yeah. Ranting helps. It, it seems like yeah. a waste of time, but after you get it off of your chest, you will feel more relaxed. So. Indeed. Yeah. yeah. And if you do good in the exams and you just want to reward yourself, go over to Papa John's and buy a pizza. Reward or yourself. Look on our Instagram. We've been giving away the pizza. Yeah. Stay tuned for our next giveaway. Well, go follow our TikTok and get yourself some serotonin. Yes. This has been the Take It Pause podcast. And I bid you adieu for the final time. That's so sad. Thank you, Heidi. Enjoy the rest of your day. Goodbye. <laughs>